All right, so what I'm gonna do now is to show you how to get the returns to scale at the local firm level. So this is a returns to scale at the firm level, the local returns to scale. Okay, I've not yet shown you how to estimate the returns to scale underlining the industry. I've not done that. Just want to do that of the firm level one. All right, so to do this, there are some few things you want to take note. The first one is, you want to be able to run your models. So the models we ran the last time, we're gonna run these models again. So you can have the CRS, you have to run and find the technical efficiency under CRS. But because we did this the last time, I'm just gonna go back to the R, okay? So I'm going to the R and just show you some few things. These are things you have done already, but I'm just going to recapitulate. And then after that, please, do you see the R interface? You see the R Studio interface? Okay, okay, okay. If you see, just type yes. All right, okay, perfect. Great, now, let's load the data set. You remember the data set? Okay, the name we give to the data set, we used to have farm one and then you remember we renamed it and then went on to look at several other things with it and all that so just a second we're going to do that right now we're going to do that right here right now. okay so I just want to show the, I just want to copy the data sets in Excel and just bring it back here. All right. So this is my R. Okay. I load the data set, look down there and you see that the data set has been loaded. I'm going to run this faster because we've gone through it already. And just to remind ourselves, I changed the data, renamed it, and several other things that I did. I'm just going to go through all of this quickly, 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 quickly. Okay. I did my benchmarking. We did a plot. You remember this was a plot. Uh, that we did. You can see that on the right hand side. Then we drew the DA frontier. Okay, using these commands, we've gone through this. We did a texting, and then we did the radial lines. Okay, and then now. What we are going to do is we are going to estimate the efficiency scores. But this time we're going to estimate the efficiency scores of all of the different, different ones. Okay. All of the different, different ones. So let me just show you here. So if you look at this first command, command number 17 there, so let me highlight it. That command is going to estimate the constant return to scale efficiency scores. This is under benchmarking. Okay. The result shows down there. Okay. The next thing is to estimate the VRS. Okay. Now, if it is not there, I will have to rerun it. The VRS is down here. Okay. I'm just going to copy it and then paste it here. So you can see the second one, that's a VRS. That is also showing down there. All of these are input orientation. Okay, they are all input orientation. Now, after that, the next command you want to estimate is the non-increasing returns. Okay, but this time I have to run, type that. So I'm going to paste the same one and write NI RS, non increasing returns to scale. That's all I'm going to do. Okay. And then come inside and change it. The return, RTS returns to scale, change it to an IRS. Let's run that as well. Okay. It says that unknown. Unknown. Okay. Unknown. Okay. So 
but sorry, I made a mistake. You shouldn't use the non-decreasing returns. I'm supposed to use the non-decreasing returns, sorry. I'm supposed to use the DRS, DRS. Okay. But we, we are calling it non-increasing returns. So remember, non-increasing returns, when it comes to the local level, it is DRS. Just take note of that, it's DRS. So you run that, now you can see down there, it has accepted it. We can show the results for each one of them. When you highlight, you can show the results for this first one. You can show the results for the VRS. You can show the results for the non-increasing returns. These results are all shown as the same. Remember, in this our data set, majority of them are on the frontier. Okay, so now, now that you've gotten these results, the next thing you have to do is to generate the scores, okay? So you're going to use a data frame to generate the scores. So let's call it data dot frame. Okay. And then we do a bracket and then do one for constant return. So we bring the double apostrophe CRS and we step out of the double apostrophe. We're going to redefine the CRS as being equal to <clears throat> a column of the CRS results, what name was it? Um, so that is even here. Okay, from this copy, from here. that's what I'm coming to. So C into bracket, column of that. Then you step out of the bracket, you do comma, and we have to do the same thing for the VRS. So that is a comma. I, I don't want to copy, type it, I'm just copying it. We change it for the VRS. Okay. We call it CTEVRS. Okay. And then you can now step out of the comma and then do for non increasing returns. Okay. So I'll post this and just call it non increasing returns. And that one, the scores was T E N I R S. T E N I R S. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating a data frame for this. Just run that and look down there. You can see all the results in numbers. Now, what you want to do is this. All right. Sorry about that. What you want to now do is that you have your results here. You can take your results to Excel. Copy it paste it into Excel, which I know you have done, okay? So copy this thing, you paste it into Excel. And then, so I'm just going to take you to Excel and show you how I did it. Uh, this is my Excel. Please, if you can see the Excel, type yes for me. Okay, so this is Excel. You have your, all your information here. Okay, good. You can see the Excel, so you type yes. So this, these information are here. I've just sent them to Excel. Now that you are in Excel, how do you now indicate that, this is a, this is a complex one, by the way. This is a complex one that tells you whether it's constant or it's variable or not. Well, we create a command here, okay? And in this command, just let me show you how the command is. It's a formula. The formula says that, and we are taking the rules we have. If B2, which is a constant returns, equals C2, which is a variable returns, then the answer is constant. We should call it constant. So we put into double apostrophe constant, okay? And then also, there's an Excel command. If that C2, which is um, this time variable returns, equals D2, which is a non-increasing returns. Okay. Then the answer is either increasing returns or decreasing return. Okay. So when we say not equal to, it means that it can be less than one. All right. Or it can be what? It can be greater than one. Okay. And then once you do that, you run it. And then you now copy this one copy your first command, and then drag it for all of the rest, okay? And you will see clearly that you have been able to 
get the command. So Excel will automatically write each of these commands for you. So that's a complex one. Now let's go to the R to see the easy one. Well, it's easy, but it's not easy. Nothing is easy in this world. Okay. So the easy one. The easy one is that you install a package. Okay. Look at my command 35, 36. You install a package known as DEAR. It's a very nice package. D E A R. By the way, all of these are in the slides, so you can look at the slide. Uh, slide. Let me just show you what I just did. What I just did in the slide. <clears throat> so in the slides, I've I've just shown you exactly everything that I did. Okay, so that you can you can see. Now, the easy approach. So we load this command. This command must be installed. Now, how do you install this command? Let me just take you back to R. So in R, you just have package, click on package. And then you can see it's already installed here. Click on install. If you have a very good internet that is running, type DEA and straight away the R1 will show. You can see that that is the one showing down here. D-E-A-R, the R is capital. And then you click install and install it. Once you've installed it, you can now run it using the library command that I have typed here. So you run this command. Remember, this is a different package. So the way you arrange your data set must be different from the previous one. Uh, let me just give it a second. All right. So this is a data set. You have to reload this data set from Excel. Because okay, you see, I'm doing this because in real life systems, you are not going to have a lot of this Excel and all that. You can, but you want an easy way as well. Okay. So we go to the data set, I've reloaded, run the data set again. Let me show you how it looks like now. This is it. If you look at this data, this data set is not acceptable in the DEAR. It's not acceptable, it's not, it's not a DEA data set. So there's a command for you to use to check whether the, this particular R object is of a DEA data class or not. And that is this command, ace.dea data. Then you, you add the name of your data. Okay. If it is false, it will tell you that it's false, it's not a DEA data. Otherwise it will tell you it's true. So what we have here is false. So it means that the data we loaded is not in a DEA data class. How do we make it that? It is this command, okay, E-G-R-T-S. I just gave it a name. You can call it any letter, okay. Now this command, what it's saying is that you should read the data, okay, which is the fun one, and the number of inputs, you should indicate it. So N-I is the number of inputs and you should write a number of inputs. So the, the NO is the number of outputs. And in this case, the number of outputs are what? Are one, which is Y, Y, Y. You can see that down here. Okay. The number of inputs are two, X1 and X2. So that's why it's written two. Run that command. And when you run that command, check this time whether it is now a D data class. And when you do that, command here is dot DEA data class, and boom, it will tell you that true. True means that now, so, so what makes it a DEA data class? It's simply trying to indicate from your data set which ones are the inputs and which ones are the outputs. All right. Once you've done, now you've confirmed, now let's run the data set. You can see that we don't use DEA, that's in benchmarking. But in DER, we use model underscore basic. So let me give it any name, I call it R. Model underscore basic, use my DEA data class, which is the EGRTS. The orientation should be input oriented, that is IO. If it is output oriented, it to be OO. Okay. If it is a, uh, what do you call it? 
directional distance function or something. There are several other ones that you can use to help to guide you. The returns to scale, we want constant return scale. Please note, when you want to determine the returns to scale at the firm level, you will use the at CRS in the command. Okay, not the VRS, but the CRS. Okay. So this will solve the two-stage DEA model. Let's run this. Okay. And how do you get a result? Just type efficiencies into bracket, the name of the command you use. Okay. That will show you the results, watch it. So you can see that it gives you each DMU and the results it had. And you can remember that the last DMU, DMU5, had a score of 67%. Now, the next command is what is automatically going to give you the retention scale at the local level for each firm. So you just type RTS into brackets, the same result you had, R. And guess what? That will give you, oh, beautiful. That will give you the returns to scale for each one of them. Now, it also tells you the lambda, okay? Now, let me just remind you of this lambda. It, it's, it's beautiful because sometimes you just got to juxtapose the theory with the knowledge you have. You remember these lambdas that we have? Let me just show you. Okay. The lambdas that we have, okay? These are the lambdas. We said that if the sum of the lambdas equal to one, that automatically is a, a VRS command, okay? It's a command, it's for the technology. If the sum of the lambdas are less than one, the technology you are running non-increasing returns. And if they are greater than or equal to one, they are running non-decreasing returns. Now, scale efficiency, okay? And we know that if it is equal to one, okay, if it is equal to one, then the scale efficiency was, was, was constant return scale, okay? And then we know of the others. Now, in this very example, let me just go back to the R. In this very example, they are all constant. So you can see that the lambda sum is all one, 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 which is telling you that they are operating the local return scale for DMU1 is constant, DMU2 is constant, DMU5 is constant, and all of that. Okay. I have another data set, which one I show you, you see that they are a mixture of all of them. In fact, I did that one in another um, R command. But the most important thing is that you should know that. And so at this stage, you can now export this and can now speak about them. Okay, don't worry the fact that it's constant for all of them. In real life situation and in your normal, for those of you who are running input and output graph, input and output graph, input and output graph, you will get the diversities if you are using the convexity assumption. So that is how you are able to estimate the local returns to scale okay, for each frame, okay, or each frame's local return scale. This is an easy one that you are supposed to gear yourself in and then be able to enjoyably do it. Okay. So these are the various commands that you need to do to be able to show your returns to scale. This is important when you're doing any analysis because it helps you to be able to know. And again, you will now be able to categorize them. How many were constant returns to scale efficient? How many were increasing returns to scale? How many were exhibiting decreasing returns to scale? What is going to be your managerial advice? There were 22, there were 27, there were 29. Okay. What is your managerial advice? Okay. You can use that for this in all of them. Okay. It's best to do this thing on the pooled frontier, on a pooled data set but it can also do it on year by year data set. Okay, that brings us to the end of the basic, the basic technical efficiency that we know of. This is the end of the basic. Now, if you're a researcher in this family, I'm encouraging you to examine the other lecture slides, which I don't normally teach them. I teach them only in an individualized, tailored coaching way, okay? So look at that slice, okay? You have them, you have the slide for the slack base measure. I think one of you is doing that. Uh, Morrison, you are doing that. And I think Richmond or somebody else is doing that. Slack base measure and the super efficiency measure of tone. 
Okay, you have the slice for that. You, you learn that beautifully. The range of directional measure of Cortella 2004, the directional distance function of chambers 96 and 98. Okay, they are there. The weighted additive model of upper ratio, the modified slag base measure of sharp et al. Okay, that was also some time, long time ago, is there. Semi oriented radial measure of hemorrhagina the town. Okay, uh, we can look at that. Um, and then the recently extended non radial directional distance function of Tabana et al. So these are different, different radial, non radial models that you want to jump into and master them. Now, why these? Because research has shown that in non radial models, they incorporate slacks. They incorporate slacks. But then they also help us in getting different targets because of the slack incorporation. And there are several other advantages. We are able to be using input orientation, output orientation, non orientation, okay? even if it is a hyperbolic graph orientation, um, these things can be used for. So you can have different, and you are incorporating slack. So it helps you not to be not to be too judgmental. Okay. Of course, they will have their, their um, disadvantages. Um, but the good thing is that some of them, you can now, after you've taken care of the slacks, you can now get the scores in a radial fashion for it to be interpreted, like the slack based model, for it to be interpreted, for it to be understood in a radial fashion. Okay. But it's good to look at the slides and be able to master all of this. Next time, what we are going to do is we are going to look at the returns to scale at the global level, the global returns to scale. That's what we are going to look at. This one is for the individual level, but then we we'll look at the global returns to scale. This is a non-parametric text of returns to scale by Simmer and Wilson in 2002. We we'll look at that statistically speaking, using the bootstrap to be able to get all of this.